Greetings. Welcome, star worshipers in time. The medicine wheels come for us from the heavens into the human heart. Close the eyes and envision your body curled safe within the deep blue womb of creation. Her heartbeat nurtures us. From that center, let's open the circle by calling down the mother through a group invocation. This audio is the invocation of Nan Iwaye, the Choctaw Chickasaw fertility ritual site, the mother mound cave who births the tribe and receives them back within the underworld. So I had been wondering if the term embodiments of love, star worshipers come down as an embodiment of love. I was wondering if that was an appropriate um, term in the context of our conference. And then I read on Indian country today that a great Navajo leader, Peter Simza, passed away last week. Um, she said that woman Felicia, who reported in ICT on his passing, she said, Za, the first elected president of the Navajo Nation, was guided by love for people and family. And then later in the week, I read that um, the first female Native American astronaut returned to Earth 
with her crew members. And the members were NASA. Well, she is um, uh, Nicole Aunapu Man. And she's of the Wailaki tribe, Northern California. The crew members are NASA astronaut John Casada, astronaut Koichi Wakata of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Anna Kikina. So, Native Americans working with people from other nations are on a vision quest to the stars. Together here today, we also look to indigenous traditions worldwide for star wisdom. Here in the heart of Indian country, we give thanks for the shamanic lineage of ancestral Puebloans and their Native American descendants of various tribes. We thank Chaco Culture National Historic Park of New Mexico and International Dark Sky Park. Foremost, we thank the University of New Mexico, Albuquerque, for hosting the Chaco Museum Collection archived in the Hibben Center. Today, we vision quest together for Chalk, the cycles of time, cycles of the stars. Chaco Canyon, New Mexico's medieval indigenous astronomical observatory, embodies star worshipers from Neolithic Southwest US and Anatolia, the medieval Middle East and Renaissance Europe. Timekeeping through astronomical observations, along with ritual talismanic astral magic, are shamanic practices that unite humankind throughout time. Shamanism is a universal human endeavor that informs humanistic and other depth psychologies and is itself embraced as our original indigenous psychology. Today, through visual and descriptive images of shamanic star worship from widespread locations and times, I offer a vision of humankind's earthly and cosmic unity. Whether embodied as stone observatories and ritual mounds, on stone as petroglyphs or pictographs, in paper treatise or shell talisman, as mechanical astrological clocks or enacted through the human body itself. Indigenous shamanism grounds humankind in our greater nature. Through love, we enter the gate of the rock, stone of the wise. We give thanks for the wisdom lineage of Stanley Krippner, shamanic pioneer of transpersonal humanistic psychology. We give thanks for James Hillman's wisdom lineage of archetypal psychology. Images or embodiments of the medicine wheel open our inner vision to a greater human community beyond national, cultural, ethnic, racial, and religious differences. Shamanism cultivates hospitality for all of humankind. There we find peace in our being, our momentary and eternal existence. Through this Medicine Wheel Vision Quest together, we may find ourselves as star-born embodiments of love. So now we'll start the PowerPoint, hopefully. Well, good. So now we can begin our 
vision quest down into the canyon. Um, after traveling on a long gravel road across a vast plateau of New Mexico, with clouds receding into the distance, we dropped down into Chaco Canyon to see this iconic image of Fajada Butte. I was stunned by the master of illusions, the vision quest site, where this enormous shaman stone of Fajada Butte is mirrored upside down in sky and cloud. Chaco Canyon, a teacher, a shaman in stone, a rock and sky formation, millions of years in the making. Online at space.com, I recently saw an illusionary image from the James Webb Space Telescope. It was a galaxy cluster billions of light years away that appeared three times in the same photo. Another more enormous galaxy was bending the light so that we see one image of the galaxy cluster from the present time, the second image from a year before that, and the third image from three years before that. The cosmos is a master of illusion. Are you able to see the uh, title up on the top of um, this? Yeah, because I can't see it too well on mine. But, um, the firebird phoenix. At sunset, we felt awe. The firebird phoenix swallows the sun and burns to ash a rebirthing of Vision Quest. Chaco Canyon, Great Kiva. In the bright mid-morning light, we approach the Great Kiva, astounded by the mastery of these medieval stonemasons. Counting to estimate 38 alcoves here, the Kiva teaches me that she regulates the moon embodied in this lunar calendar of stone. The medicine wheel Kiva teaches me that he paces the sun with this portal here to the cosmos mirroring the canyon hillside behind it so as to cradle Sirius, the sun's sun, rising just before the sun at winter solstice. Chalk, cycles of time. Raining in my mind, I wander off and look to the canyon wall at an image size and shape I'm more accustomed to, two-dimensional rock writing or petroglyph. Chalk sometimes means cycles of time. Here is the word cycles in some world languages. Greek, kuklos. Kannada, chakras, Chinese, chu ki, Faroese, shuklar, Persian, charke. The 260 day count of the Mayan calendar is called so kin, compare with the Chinese cycles, tzu ki. So, of course, we all know that migrations of peoples have been intermingling and crossing paths for so many thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. And of course, linguistics is a good way to trace that as well as genetics. Here, chalk is depicted inside an emergent spiral. He seems to have entered it through this elongated X portal here which represents the limits of Earth's illusionary back and forth swing between winter and summer solstices. Winter and summer, winter and summer, as Earth orbits the sun along the ecliptic. So Chuck measures seasons. The other upper corner of the emergent spiral is marked by a cross 
which here isn't a Christian symbol, but instead a medicine wheel cross, demarcating the four houses of the wind, north, south, east, and west. So chalk maps out time onto the earth. The Mayan four chalks are the four directions of the medicine wheel. So cycles of time are wheels of time. White, north, red, east, black, west, and yellow, south. The Inca used a foot plow called the Chaki Takla in the opening of the earth ritual at the beginning of the agricultural cycle at spring equinox. The Hanan Chanka people of Peru originated from Lake Choclacocha. This here, this chalk means corn. But how is the god chalk embodied here in Chaco Canyon? Who is he here? And how do all of the complex features of Chaco culture fit together? How can we comprehend its vast embodiment? I rein my mind in further to trace my own steps in creating this logo, specifically the winged sun, which will serve as example of archetypes. This logo centered around the winged sun came to me during a vision quest at the beach near my home. I was photographing a sunset across the ocean when I saw that on this specific day of the year, the sun set exactly in a valley between two wings of land. This was at fall equinox, the time when the arms or wings of the elongated X portal marking Earth's annual journey along the ecliptic cross in the middle. Please sit or stand with your wings spread out in flight. While imagining the spherical sun in your heart center. The winged sun is the deepest archetypal image of eagle spirit guide, embodying three in one symbol. Yellow bird, the earthly eagle who lives on earth medicine wheel and flies on two powerful wings. Then the solar eagle that moves as sun medicine wheel across Earth's sky, yet remains still in the center of our solar system, solar wheel. Here, a golden sphere or egg. And the cosmic transpersonal firebird or phoenix, who remains still in the center of the cosmic wheel, yet also in continual cosmic rebirth. Out of its own absolute ashes, the eight-pointed star here, cosmic rose cross, is also an earthly medicine wheel square cross embodied here with diagonals to the four directions. The bird, our soul, the being, emerges from the center like a rose blossoming open. So the winged sun is a universal archetype that we expect to find in many locations worldwide. Historically, one multicultural example is the archetype's embodiment as the Egyptian goddess Isis in Rosicrucianism. And this is a Rosicrucian amulet. That um, tradition dates back to 5000 YBP, which is years before the present, 5000 years ago. 
Let's exercise our imagination in being our own unique embodiment of the winged sun. Please spread out your wings in flight while imagining the spherical sun in your heart center. You are a human embodiment of the archetypal winged sun. Now slowly crouch down. And you can do that to relax your back while I continue directions. Begin to move and stretch upwards and outwards. As if you are a baby bird hatching from a golden egg and emerging from your nest. Imagine your body fixed in the center of the emergent spiral or wheel. You are the cosmic sun who births creation in time. You are Chuck, the timekeeper, the cycles of the stars. This petroglyph, again shaped like a square, medicine wheel is also marked diagonally with Earth's four directions and also embodies a human signified by the head with navel as center. At Vision Quest sites, the soul takes flight. Here, Shumash shamans slept at night in vision caves that serve as the underworld, where they receive visions during soul flights. Shamans record their visions as pictographs. Another multicultural medicine wheel that depth psychologist C.G. Jung carved in stone uh, as, as an actual stone petroglyph at his home in Switzerland, bears the Greek child Telesphoros as center, embodying Mercury as ever-changing emergence. The diagonal lines radiating from him are lightning bolts and a stream of water. With old world astrological or astral magic symbols, for Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, and Mars circling. Greek gods, symbols for ancient Anatolian, Syrian, and Persian gods. Telesphoros gestures the ancient hermetic shamanic sign for as above, so below. Here, I stand on the stone in the navel of the storm. I um, had purchased this Navajo storm design rug. And this is obviously a new world image, my own medicine wheel rug with a center Hogan where the shaman receives power through diagonal lightning bolts from the four directions. She is surrounded by radiating stars. Sometimes the sun god is also the storm god. So this is a nighttime vision of the black sky with brilliant shining stars. Phoenix is ever changing. You knew many old world symbols of storm gods, the lightning bolt foremost among them. But was this a coincidence that you carved the same medicine wheel shapes that we know from the Southwestern indigenous cultures, adding symbols that he knew from the old world. Probably was not a coincidence because he came to visit, he came on vision quest to the Puebloans in the Southwest in 1924-25. In Taos, he met Chief Mountain Lake. Usually one can't trace the transmission of archetypal images so clearly for the reason that they are universal embodiments expressed and depicted by humans worldwide. 
Archetypes are by their very nature, both universally constant and meant to be expressed multiculturally, changeably. Kawhi Sun Sky Ladder, looking, oops, I suckle forward too much, looking back in time to the Neolithic Southwest, we went on vision quest to a California site called Little Petroglyph Canyon. This canyon is very small in comparison with Chaco Canyon, but the Kauaisu Paiutes began making petroglyphs here around 15,000 years before the present. And there are hundreds of these images. Since the Neolithic past, descendants of that tribe continued to repack or rescrape the petroglyphs in order to rebirth their shamanic powers. This vision quest site marker depicts shamanic ascent above the sun up the sky ladder. It also shows what looks like an animal pin or trap next to a female fertility ritual symbol. So 15,000 years ago, this canyon was used to herd and trap game animals. But more importantly, Little Petroglyph Canyon was used by the tribe's shamans to measure the seasons, the time of year, by the sun and stars. Throughout humankind's hundreds of thousands of years on earth, up until the recent time of light pollution, the whole planet was a dark sky park where we could see so many more stars with the naked eye. Even so, for shamanic ascent to receive a vision of the cosmos, shamans often positioned themselves below the surface of the earth in canyons, caves, or kivas. Through vision quests to the underworld, we have regulated earthly time by solar, lunar, and cosmic time. Down in the canyon, Eagle Spirit Guide conducts the soul of bighorn sheep to the above world into rebirth at spring equinox. Vulture Spirit Guide conducts the soul of bighorn sheep to the underworld after capture for food. Here we see a notch in the canyon wall. We'll talk about that more later. In Neolithic Anatolia, Gobekli Tepe near Haran was another megalithic astronomical observatory. Unfortunately, I haven't been there, so I have no photos. But like Chaco Canyon, yet constructed around 11,000 years before the present, as old as these petroglyph sites in California. The circular observatories at Gobekli Tepe, tall stone monoliths, some carved to represent humans, some carved with animal spirit guides. One example is a carved vulture, like this petroglyph where the vulture is conducting the soul in spherical form, like the sun or a star, upwards into the cosmos. 10 to 15,000 years ago, for our ancestral shamans here and in Haran, bordering on Syria, Vega was the pole star. In Gobekli Tepe, the shaman would enter the observatory, or Kiva, from the south, so that he or she would receive the vision of Vega in the far north night sky, observing it throughout the year, circling the pole, like a vulture falling in spiral flight. In the dark Kiva, star worshipers would face south towards the shaman, where they would see an image of Vega, the brightest star in the sky, reflected on the Kiva wall. So again, the illusionary magic 
of our cosmos. At this notch, morning star, Venus, rises out of Earth medicine wheel and the animal shaman ascends, bringing forth gain. So let's see if I can point to it. Down here is Earth medicine wheel. Uh, the cross represents Venus. Here's the ascent. The shaman is ascending, connected to a power line here of, um, of lightning bolt from the heavens. And lo and behold, in spring, the game animals are born again. When the Pleiades sets in the west at spring equinox, the shaman brings forth animals for the hunt. For some Native American tribes, the Pleiades is called the Seven Sisters. Typical of archetypes, the symbol this tribe used, the Kwaisu, to depict the star cluster, a circle surrounded, surrounding six dots with a seventh dot in the center, is seen worldwide as a symbol of the Pleiades, and it's also called the seed of life because that's where in the spring the seeds will be reborn. The Kawaisu Paiutes call this shaman here, represented by her um, clothing or a medicine bag, um, so they called her Yahuera, the goddess of animals in the cave of springs who brings forth game animals and healing powers through song and dance. Yawera's house is the portal to the animal underworld. And I was going to play another chant um, uh, from an MP3, but I think rather than interrupt and um, risk not getting the PowerPoint back, we'll, we'll do that at the end. Um, this is her rod of her arm and rod of power, which um, the shamans in all places around the world often had wands, magic wands or rods of power, uh, like we still do today in the Chickasaw. Uh, so there she is bringing forth these beautiful creatures to share. Here's what happens at the notch. At sunset through a notch in the canyon wall, the sun dagger marks the seasons on calendar spirals on the canyon floor below. 15,000 years ago, Kawaiisu shamans kept time of the seasons by where on these calendar spirals the sun dagger made its mark. So there's two faint spirals. Deep in Neolithic time, shamans measured the days and months of the year on this petroglyph sunburst calendar. Back at Fajada Butte Sun Dagger site, ancestral Pueblans, back to 5,000 years ago before the present, kept time in the same ways until around 1250 CE of Common Era, when the medieval climate anomaly happened worldwide. It was a global climate change event. Across Europe, there was a long lasting deep snowpack causing migrations. Here in Chaco Canyon, it took the form of a 40 year drought. So despite the Puebloans large reservoir with masonry dam, they had to abandon this astronomical vision quest site. My photo of the park's information plaque shows how the sun daggers on the petroglyph calendar spirals were red. So the summer solstice dagger at the center of the big spiral, spring and fall equinox, um, between the center and the edge of the big spiral. And winter solstice, 
uh, sun dagger shown on both edges. Through shamanic ascent on this petroglyph in Chaco Canyon, here's the person down below. They become the shaman who ascends. Um, the Pueblo shamans receive a vision of the solar system. So um, this may be um, um, a medicine wheel also, but I, I think it also represents the different stars as they perceive them passing around Earth. Another petroglyph signifies the three stars of Orion's belt, indicating Orion as this etched X shape with arm or sword, just like Chalk had in the little emergence spiral we saw earlier, pointing to the star Sirius right here. So Black God Chalk is Orion in the winter night sky. And we know that the line from Sirius through Chalk's belt points to the Pleiades. The Pleiades rise at fall equinox in the east, marking Chalk's emergence from the underworld into the above world, the world of the dead of night. Slowly, Black God Chalk follows the Pleiades across the arc of winter sky until it's set at spring equinox in the west. We know that Greek temples face the Pleiades rising and that Egypt's great pyramid is angled along the arc of the Pleiades across the sky. 11,000 years ago at, at Gobekli Tepe in Haran, other Kiva observatories were aligned to view the Pleiades and the god of fertility in the land of the dead every fall, returning to the world of the living every spring. Then around 650 Common Era, the Olmec related to the Chickasaw created the pyramid complex of Xochicalco, which translates in the House of Flowers. So Xochicalco was likely positioned toward the Pleiades set at spring equinox when flowers would begin to bloom. The astronomical, astronomical observatory at Xochicalco is a cave dug in the rock and painted black, yellow, and red colors of the medicine wheel. There is a chimney designed to project the image of the sun onto the floor of the cave when the sun is at its zenith or astronomical noon. So again, illusions of the cosmos help us keep track of time here on earth. This pyramid complex was occupied from 650 to 900 CE when the sun, when it was destroyed by fire not coincidentally, at the time of Xochicalco's destruction around 900 CE, Chaco Canyon was beginning its heyday with all of its megalithic observatories being built. So with the large megalithic observatories, we can follow migrations of the people. Puebloans today have taught those on vision quests like myself about the mysteries of Chaco Canyon, who certain kivas embody. We thank their ancestral Puebloans shamanic lineage for this wisdom. We look south down into Casa Rin Canada Kiva through the keyhole portal. We can trace the steps of Chaco's winter flight across the black sky in mirror image. The Chacoan star worshipers seated here along this stone seating. They watched for Chac's emergence to begin with the Pleiades fall rising equinox in the east, marked by this angle right here, I think it's this, this way. A star worshiper places a small flame in the alcove um, that mirrors the Pleiades rising. 
Also likely is that Chalk moving, when Chalk moved across the sky, his stars appeared as reflections in the different alcoves. Later in the winter long vigil, when Chalk is at its zenith in the winter sky, shining through the middle of the keyhole at winter solstice and pointing at the bright star Sirius, the ritual worshipers emerge from this underground underworld entrance right here. You can't see it, but there's actually a little portal down below here and a, a cave underneath. And so the ritualists emerge from the underground entrance to celebrate the light's rebirth. The winter chief enters here from the south facing north, embodied as the moon god, god of night standing on Chalk's forehead. So we'll be right about here. Here are Chalk's cheeks and eyes embodied in stone and proclaiming his shamanic power as embodiment of the sun god. Also, the winter chief approaches the firebox of Chuck's mouth and lights it aflame. So that's a winter equinox when we light the candles for the birth. At spring equinox, when the Pleiades sets in the west at this angle, over on this side, the light shines into the alcove and a light, a small candle or burning light is lit here. Marking time, Black God Chalk has imprinted the X shape of his body that we saw in the petroglyph, an hourglass X shape. He's imprinted that onto the earth below. The medicine wheel Kiva embodies him in stone. Around 500 BCE, eastward, far across the land and sea to the kingdom of Hungary, which included Slovakia, the calendar culture carved underworld kivas in Stone Mountain. The Neolithic star worshippers of Gobekli Tepe passed down their wisdom to the Sabian star worshippers of Haran in the Middle Ages. So in the 10th century CE, at the same time as we are here in Chaco Canyon, the Anatolian Haranian Tebet Ibn Kura carried that wisdom to the Arab translation center of Baghdad. There he translated his Syriac treatises into Arabic. Tebet Ibn Kura's translated treatise De Imaginibus on the images of stars form the greater part of Gayat al-Hakim, which in Arabic is goal of the wise, goal of the sage or shaman. That translation was transported by other shamans on vision quest into Iberia, near, you know, Spain here on Portugal and Spain is the Iberian Peninsula, where it was translated into Castilian Spanish for King Alfonso the Wise. From Castilian, it was translated into Latin by a medieval European shaman or scholar, a shaman scholar, and renamed Picatrix. Chickasaw shell gorget designs. These are gorgets worn on the neck here by a, a cord. Back to 800 CE, which is the time of Chaco culture, and also in the Middle Ages in um, Arab countries, in Syria, in um, Turkey, and in Spain, as the seed of life image with creation rebirth from the center star. I've got a little stone on it here, a pebble, so you can't see. There's a central star who is twirling and um, spiraling in emergence out from the center um, image as a seed of life. 
and the animal shaman who transforms into many animals is prevalent image in Anatolia and Syria as it is in other locations worldwide. Sun god, god of day and the living transforms into storm god, god of night and the dead. Seafaring travelers from distant lands may have brought the star wisdom with them up the great Mississippi, but no culture has claim to these universal archetypes that humans worship and recreate worldwide. During the European Renaissance, the star treatise, Goal of the Wise, called Picatrix in Latin, was transported to a library in the Czech Republic near Slovakia, near Hungary. We went there on Vision Quest in 2017 when I presented a shamanism workshop for the International Transpersonal Association. This Czech library is not far from the old world kingdom of Hungary where the Kalenderberg Kiva is dug into the rocks. You can see the different star symbols and images here that were turned from petroglyph, from stone, from ritual into paper treatise. And we've seen them in shell as well. So in any form, in any human embodiment, any genetic disposition, any language, these are universal. This is a poor image. I had to capture this from the online version of the Picatrix because I didn't take a photograph of this page when I was there. But you can see um, the medieval star worshippers image X in this Renaissance treatise, Picatrix. It also, and it says this here, which you can't read, symbolizes God as man running, just as our medieval X petroglyph in Chaco Canyon symbolizes Orion who traverses the night sky as black God Chalk. Then outside in Prague, this amazing complex astronomical, astrological clock was being renovated in 2017. So you see the scaffolding, but there are many different ways in which uh, the medieval people who created these and Renaissance um, mechanical clocks captured the different types of time. Now here's my cat to visit. She's gonna step on everything. <laughs> Okay, so um, the Czech library is not far from the old world kingdom of Hungary. I have said that. Um, let's see. So here I am visiting with Picatrix. This book is considered in, in any culture, well, in cultures that have written uh, languages on paper treatises, the um, shaman, star worshiper, Picatrix, who is considered as the author of this book, is a mythical um, archetypal creature, person, and he is embodied in this book. So here I'm visiting with Picatrix, embodied in this book. This is a um, wording in the book that says, um, Venus and Mercury are united by love and thus they affect with piety also um, the actual like creative intelligence, the intelligence and art of the universe. So again, through love, we are affecting everything. So Picatrix, the star worshiper, Chalk, Black God Chalk, we leave you here. On our Medicine Real Vision Quest together, we've seen that timekeeping through astronomical observations, along with ritual and talismanic astral magic, are shamanic practices 
that unite humankind throughout time. Shamanism is itself embraced as our original indigenous psychology, a hospitality of inclusion in love. Chaco Canyon embodies ourselves, the star worshipers. So let's see if I can do this, stop share. <laughs> All right. Can you still see me there, Cassandra? Yes. All right. Yep, I can see you. Oh, good. Okay, now we're back on. Now, let me see. I don't know if we want to try and do the Yahweh chant, uh, yeah, the Yahweh chant as um, closure for this. Uh, I did post in the chat room, you see that I posted um, my signature, which shows different um, websites and things that I'm on. And on those websites, you'll find uh, Medicine Wheel Techniques. Uh oh, I don't see it in the, um... in the chat. Did I pull it off of there? Yeah. Signature, you just click on the signature slide. It's in there. And um, that, you know, that you can do later um, as well. But you'll see links to um, my own um, personal web page. And in there, you'll be able to find the different rituals that I've drawn images for, um, shamanic uh, ritual images that you can use in your own psychology practice. I have a chapter in a book by um, Stanley Krippner, Cheryl Fracasso, and Harris Friedman. And uh, that book, there's a link to that as well on threeeagles.net. That's my site. And if you look at the techniques, it will tell you exactly how to perform the um, Medicine Wheel Vision Quest ritual with your clients, with your students, and that way they can learn to center themselves in the Hogan, the center of the shaman stone medicine wheel, and begin to find the different um, animal shamans that belong in their constellation and apply that in their own lives. Okay. So I don't know if um, you have any questions, but that was my presentation. We could try to see if I can access that other chant for closure. Let's I love that. Okay, hold on. Let's do it. Um, you don't want the PowerPoint. SHP for hosting this wonderful conference. 
to the stars. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for being there. All right. Well, take care and enjoy the conference. You too. Love, love to everyone. <laughs>